Thank you. Next, I'll yield to Congressman Carter from Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you all for being here. I cannot tell you how much this means to us. Your testimony, your expertise is, is invaluable for us to hear from you. You know, we, we, we know that we've got an epidemic here in America, and we know what a problem it is, and certainly you know as well as anyone what a problem it is. Um, and, and you've heard all the stats. Enough fentanyl in this country to kill every American ten times over. Enough fentanyl in this country. We, we're losing people every seven and a half minutes. And, and it's, an, it's an issue that every community experiences. And, and that's what <clears throat> I think frustrates me more than anything, especially about the southern border, because a lot of people look at that on TV or in the media, and they think it's just a problem at the southern border. But it's not. These drugs are infesting communities everywhere. Even in my, I represent South Georgia. I represent the entire coast of Georgia. And I've got a lot of rural areas in my, in my district. And even there, we're having problems, serious problems. In fact, the, the overdose, the fentanyl deaths in Georgia, up 800%, 800%, unbelievable. I want to share a quick story with you. Um, I'm a pharmacist. Did y'all know that? Yeah, I thought you did. Yeah, it came up once or twice. The oldest, the oldest yeah, pharmacist. The oldest pharmacist in Congress. But I, I do want to share a story with you because it is embarrassing to me that this happened. But I was at a town hall meeting, and I misspoke. I called this fentanyl overdose. I called it fentanyl addiction. <clears throat> and a mother who had lost a child, God bless her, she corrected me. And she was right, and I was wrong. She said, no, sir, it's fentanyl poisoning. And she was right. It is fentanyl poisoning. I want to ask you, Mr. Miriam, does the, does the DEA recognize individuals who, who die because of fentanyl poisoning as victims of a crime? Now, I'm, I'm asking about the DEA. I'm not asking yeah. about law enforcement. Yeah. Uh, the DEA um, is taking a very direct approach in, in working with families. I'm aware of family summits that they've held recently. Um, I do know that there have been times when uh, death resulting from charges were pursued. And so it is a, uh, something that we're very focused on. Over 107,000 overdose deaths in this country last year, Much, many of them due to, to fentanyl. Uh, 200 people every day. I, it is without question an epidemic. And, and, and it's an embarrassment to me that in this previous Congress, this Democratic-controlled Congress, not a single bill was passed to deal with the fentanyl crisis. Unbelievable. I, I, I just can't believe that, that it's not getting the, the attention that it, that it should be getting. I want to ask you uh, again, Mr. Canary, I, I, and I want to actually publicly applaud the FDA because I know that they have already started with the, with the packaging information for over-the-counter naloxone. They, they've actually started preparing for that, and I, and I applaud them for that. Even though it hasn't been passed yet, they've started, and, and they're encouraging companies, manufacturers, to apply for that. They want this to happen. I, I'm, I think that's unprecedented for a, for a government agency like that, especially the FDA, to take that kind of initiative, and I, and I thank them for that. Dr. Westlake, what, what does that look like? in your practice? What does it look like in, in community pharmacy if we have that available? Yeah, to have on, you know, so you have to prescribe Narcan? Right. I think it's fantastic. I think it's a great idea. It, 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 really, it really doesn't make any sense why it's not um, because it, there's, no, there's no harmful effects from it. So the only thing it does is reverses, you know, kicks the, the opioids off the opioid receptor. So, I mean, if, you, if you're on opioids and you take it, you know, you, you'll be in pain, but but if you're not taking, you know, if I gave, if I took it right now, I wouldn't feel anything. There's no side effects to it. So it's it's one of those things where I I, I don't see any reason why there's there'd be any reason to, to have it be prescription. Good, good. Two more things, real quick. First of all, we've got to address also the rogue internet and and what's going on with internet pharmacies and the ability of these uh, of these children and these kids to be able to get these drugs over over the internet. 
that's a, we know what a problem that is. But I want to very quickly ask all four of you if you could just comment because Gus Bilirakis asked a question a little while ago that, that unfortunately we didn't get a chance to answer, and that's about marijuana. And I just want to know, I just want to know your thoughts, and I'm not going to preface it with my feelings. I'm just asking you your thoughts about marijuana and legalization of marijuana. So I, I, I was on the Controlled Substance Board in Wisconsin, and, and we had the ability to schedule different things, and so you know, marijuana was one of the things. I think there's a, there's a, there's a kind of some false narrative out there that it's, that it, that, that it's, a, that it's a drug. I mean, that's a, that it's a, a medicine. Um, you know, it hasn't been studied, you know, in, in the way that other medicines have been studied. I think the true argument to have is that, you know, it's definitely an intoxicant, and, you know, and should that, you know, should it be legalized as an intoxicant to, 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 to weasel the kind of the way in the back and say, oh, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a drug that, or it's a, um, it's a, you know, it's a medicine. So, you know, it, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're in pain and you get drunk, you're going to, you're going to feel better while you're intoxicated. Um, and I think there's, you know, there's, there are studies that need to be done. I'm not saying that it's not. And, and, and the bills that, you know, the, the, the Halt Fentanyl Act has, you know, scheduling for, you know, the ability, you know, to the decreased, um, regulatory oversight of schedule, all Schedule One, So there could be studies done, and there might be med medical applications for it, but right now it's and, really... And, and I'm not opposed to that. Please understand. Yeah. I, I should have been more specific. I'm talking about the recreational use of marijuana. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what I'll say after having done more than 30 years in DEA is it's still a controlled substance, um, but I do know the DEA has worked to, uh, over the last several years to support additional research on the potential medical application. And, and I'm all for that. I think we all are. But I'm, I'm again, I'm talking specifically about the recreational use of marijuana. Yeah, I appreciate the question, Congressman. But I uh, again, it's still a, a regulated Understood. controlled substance. I'll just, I'll just jump in and say, you know, I, from a recreational marijuana standpoint, I, I know that Zach had done that. Um, I don't know of anybody who made better decisions as a result of using recreational marijuana. I, I think that leads to a diminishing of some capacity and capabilities, and, and that kind of leads to other poor decisions down the road, uh, or even that night. Yeah, I mean, I, I just would wonder <clears throat> how many people that have done other drugs, you know, like cocaine or whatever, um, how many of them actually started with Recreational marijuana. Bingo. That's what I'm getting at. Right. My opinion is a gateway drug. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to say it before I gave you the opportunity to answer, but, you know, I've listened to these experts come in here and say, oh, it desensitizes the receptors, and, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still not convinced that it's not, that the recreational use of marijuana is nothing more than gateway drug. And, and I'll just end with that. Thank you.